welcome. You're watching The Social Network on NDTV 24-7. I'm Kajari Sen. And as we all know, social media has changed the way that the world interacts. Particularly when it comes to politics in India, we've been seeing a huge wave of modernization. And today we saw Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal ask for a membership drive from the people of the country across the board, asking them to either SMS a number, fill in a form, or write an email. Clearly a new technological wave there, but the question we need to ask is whether this data that you are giving to a political party is going to be private or not. Will your identity be safe, protected and private? This is what we are discussing here on the social network today. And joining us are the member of the IT cell for the Ahmadmi Party, Ankur Shavasta, who's in studio with us. We've also got uh, uh, Vikas Pandey, who is uh, um, who is the founder of I Support Namo. So we've got both of them with us. So let's uh, start with Ankur on this. Uh, Ankur, we've seen the Ahmadmi Party uh, identify very closely with a very technologically savvy, uh, socially connected uh, sort of social uh, mobilization platform. But when they do that and they're using these new technological <coughs> innovative ways, do they have a policy in place to protect the information that they're asking for? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we, 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 as you said, we leverage technology uh, to the extent uh, is uh, possible. And uh, along with that, we are also very conscious of the ill effects that it might potentially bring. And data privacy could be one of them. So we're very particular about that. We have strict policies about what do we do with that data, who is act, who's authorized to access it at different levels, and how is that data going to be stored and shared across uh, different organizations or different di divisions within the organization. So yes, absolutely. Right. We'll come back to that. But let me quickly go over to Vikas as well. <coughs> Vikas, do you see this as the model of the future? Do you see using um, social media, using cell phones, using emails, using all kinds of technological services as the way to leverage uh, and to get cadres? See, the Amani party is doing this because they, do, they are not a, a cadre-based party and they have to expand in all over India. Whereas in BJP, it's already a cadre-based party. We have got cadre uh, all around India in different forms. What India 272 as a platform and BJP.org as a mem uh, membership platform is doing is augmenting the whole process. And at the end of the day, those volunteers will be mapped to a booth level. So I see that, yeah, this is a good change and uh, uh, it's not something which is very much innovative. It started from IAC also and BJP.org is doing this since I don't know when. So uh, it's, it's something which uh, party as such is doing already and this is the uh, way forward. I think everybody uh, will be doing the same thing. Right, we've got uh, joining us from our Bangalore studio, uh, Faisal Farooqi, uh, the founder of Mouthshut.com. Faisal, <coughs> let me quickly toss this question over to you. We've just heard uh, Ankur and Vikas talk about uh, how political parties are leveraging social media and uh, sort of mobile phone information and so on and so forth to gather momentum. But what are the risks which are inherent in giving out that kind of data? <coughs> Uh, thank you very much. I think um, this is entirely an exercise of data collection and data gathering. And Aam Aadmi Party uh, and its, its Chief Minister uh, Arvind Kejriwal's announcement today that they are doing a membership drive and anybody can just SMS and put their phone number, etc. I think this, they're just trying to gather data. We don't know really what that data is going to be at the end of the day, where it's going to reside. So I just heard um, the IT cell member of Aam Aadmi Party say that you know they have a very strict user policy, et cetera, but they need to define that. There has to be a terms of services. There has to be a privacy policy. I know from my experience of managing Mouchet.com, we manage millions of, of members. We have a very defined policy. So all these parties, both BJP and Aam Aadmi Party, they need to define who's going to use it, how are they going to use it, because otherwise in the wrong hands, it's a very, very potentially dangerous data where people can be identified and their voting pattern can be identified and it's just going to enhance the privacy risk that we all have after voting, uh, which is our constitutional right. Right, and I think that's an important point, Ankur, and I'm going to take that to you. When it comes to identifying voting patterns, at the end of the day, the right of every Indian, every individual, is that any vote that they give will be anonymous. Is there a line which is being drawn between the people who want to be party workers and those who just want to be voters? Absolutely. So the current drive, as uh, Arvind announced uh, this afternoon, is a drive to get members. These are people who will work for the expansion of Aam Admi Party in different states and villages and cities across the country. 
so these are people who we see as an extension to ourselves. This is not to violate the secret ballot, to, so to say. Mm -hmm. uh, how these people will cast their votes or others who do not become a part of Aam Aadmi Party choose to cast their votes, that's information that will only remain with them. Uh, this mechanism is not to trespass into that information. But the risk always exists of this information leaking. No, there is, oh, sorry, yes. Uh, yes, for with unscrupulous people, absolutely, which is why I couldn't agree more with, you know, the gentleman who just spoke about that. Uh, amongst, uh, like everything else ARP does, we have to be completely transparent about our data usage uh, policy and, w you know, what do we do? We're committed to protecting the privacy of millions who have put their trust in us and that I, will remain I would so. like to disagree here right. a bit. Uh, with, with my association with uh, uh, India Against Corruption also, mm -hmm. I've seen that the whole volunteer, uh, volunteer list of India Against Corruption were used by Aam Aadmi <coughs> Party on a later stage. Okay. So this was something which even Anna Hazari also took. Did uh, flag. Yes, did absolutely. flag. So therefore, uh, for Aam Aadmi Party, they have to strictly look into this privacy issue again so that they don't uh, get it misused later on. Sure. Uh, now, um, let's also, uh, Vikas, talk about uh, the application, the mobile application that we saw Mr. Modi, the BJP's prime ministerial candidate launch, uh, India 272+. Now, the problem with a mobile application, and we've seen this globally, mm -hmm. is its possibility for misuse. An application which is asking for voter details, don't you think that's problematic? See, it's just like, I, I will speak as an end user, not as mm -hmm. a... Uh, yeah, not I as a owner, but as a user. A, so, I, as an end user, I think the people, uh, and also I've got access to people who are actually developing it. I know they are uh, pretty top class and pretty well-defined professionals who are doing it. And I have full confidence that they are taking care of privacy pretty well because I'm not getting any spam calls or spam SMSs other than the things which I want from the party, you know. Right, we've got um, from Chandigarh joining us, Arjun Shiran. Let's go over to him. Arjun, you're a lawyer, so let's get a legal perspective on this. We've got uh, Ankur Vikas, uh, all of them talking about how the effort is being made to ensure that data will be private. But there is nothing that an individual can do legally if the data does get leaked because we don't have any privacy laws. Absolutely. That has always been an issue. The absence of a comprehensive privacy law in this country has raised huge concerns. You know, the Department of Information Technology has a draft ready. No one is even looking at it. I must point out, I, before the show, I had the opportunity of going through the websites of all major parties in this country. And uh, surprisingly, most of them did have privacy policies. I, that just shows that they are, in fact, a little more careful than we think they are about the issues of privacy, at least on the face of it. But at the same time, I think when they should, when they think of themselves as people who will be using the internet to, uh, say, canvas for elections, to increase their waterways, etc., mm -hmm. then we should also uh, call them intermediaries, just as we call all other kinds of websites. So once you do call them intermediaries, I think they have some legal obligations as well. So the the one of the provisions, for example, the intermediary rules of 2011 ask you to have a privacy policy for sure. Now we have, for example, we must realize for, uh, that, for example, the CPIM website, that right. has an excellent privacy policy that also says that if you have any issues with this particular policy, you can mail us at admin at so and so, that is the email address given. Mm -hmm. So that kind of uh, accountability mechanism ought to exist. <laughs> It was surprising that the Aam Aadmi Party, uh, with all its, in all fairness, uh, did not have a privacy policy on its own website, even though in the previous few versions of the website, sure. on certain other links, the privacy policy is there. So I think even though it's a developing movement, they will get a sense of this and they will develop a privacy policy. I think the issue is bigger than that. Even if you have a privacy policy, A, the, then the issues are two. First, do you actually engage in this right. issue of talking about privacy, talking about data sovereignty, and, and talking about whether you respect the, a person's personal data or not? Because we have seen this across the board that most parties have, even though they have not used these, this right. data for commercial purposes or abused it for any other purpose, but still there's a possibility of abuse, right?
certainly. And I think uh, there's a very important point no, that I Arjun just, brought I just up there, which I'm my... going to uh, toss to Faisal at the moment. Faisal, we just heard Arjun talk about uh, the fact that, you know, th that we, the people don't know. People don't know that this vulnerability exists until we saw the entire NSA PRISM debacle. In the United States of America, we thought uh, that our data would be safe. We saw this this message coming from the election commission that Google was going to be, uh, you know, sharing information with them. So these risks are inherent in the system. Absolutely. It, 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 there is an inherent risk in the system, but I think we also have an obligation. Uh, I think these parties <coughs> have an obligation to tell people all these risks. Uh, for example, there is no perfect security when it comes to Internet. I mean, True Caller's database has been hacked. Adobe's database have been hacked in the past. Microsoft's Hotmail database has been hacked in the past. Just because you've not received a spam from India Against Corruption or you've not received a spam from some political party in the past doesn't mean that their database is secure. We don't even know if these databases are on shared servers, if these are on sh servers that are lying in their offices or they're globally recognized, you know, tier three data centers. There are a lot of there, there are a lot of standards for data privacy and data security. We don't even know if Amadmi parties right. is complying with those data standards because, as uh, as Arjun said, there is no data standards or privacy standards in our country. So we need to define that, and only then should a chief minister ask for people's phone numbers along with you know voter sure. ID or pan uh, voter card numbers, etc. It is well, very, very big risk uh, for people to share. Otherwise, let me let uh, me just to toss that parties. over to Ankur actually. So. Essentially, what we've got Faisal saying there is that there is no standardization in India. So essentially, anything that the Ahmadmi Party does going ahead when it comes to data protection, you've spelt out what you're doing quite systemically, it has to be on standards which are reasonably arbitrary. Are you saying you're adhering to international standards? Um, I, the, 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 there's a lot of speculation going around about you know, what Ahmadmi Party is doing and what it's not doing, right? Uh, as somebody just suggested, there's no perfect security on the yeah, internet, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. there are a, stand, a set of best policies and standards, right? So how do you secure your data on a data center? Mm -hmm. Who has access to that data center? What are you doing with firewalls? What are your policies about usage? What are your policies about sharing data with third parties, right? Vikas just talked about IAC data and you know usage you of like that by some other people and so on and so forth. We're not aware of that, right? As Aam Admi Party, as an entity, right. we're committed to making sure that people's privacy is maintained. We're committed to ensuring that the data people have given to us with their trust is not violated. And I, you know, somebody made this point about legally it cannot be enforced, mm -hmm. but me as a citizen, forget me being a person of Aam Admi Party, right? Me being a citizen, if I have enrolled with Aam Admi Party and sure. tomorrow I find out they have you know, breached my trust, they're gonna lose my vote. Yeah. My reputation is at stake. Your uh, reputation at risk. is at and stake. And that's all I've got. Yeah. But reputation being at stake, and this <coughs> is true for political parties, uh, Vikas, across the board. But how significant is that when they still have your information? See, if I commit my information to them, it, uh, at least act, act, uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, I'm saying that I want to get information, I want to get involved with the party. Right. So it is something responsibility of a party to make sure that they get what they want and they don't get uh, more than what they want. So I think this is where the reputation of the party is some, uh, something which end user have, has to take care of. Right. Um, Arjun, let's go over to Arjun and get a last word in on this discussion. Arjun, uh, what really the bottom line seems to be is that we're going to be collecting this data. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do legally, but we will try and ensure as far as possible with the reputation of political parties on the line that your data will be protected. Is that a good enough promise for the people of the country? I don't think that's a good enough promise, but at the same time, I don't think the, all these parties have sinister plans, frankly. I don't think that when they ask people for their numbers, voter IDs, etc., they are thinking of using them commercially, even though there have been instances of commercial use, say, in the U.S., in the campaigns, different campaigns. But I would like to say that every voter in this country has the right to selectively and voluntarily give certain information to these parties. At the same time, these parties must have a robust mechanism to ensure that this data does not fall into right. uh, wrong hands, this data is not misused, this data is not used for malicious purposes. Right. Having said that, I must also mention that the government should come up with certain guidelines 
in which these, these parties should also be <coughs> dealt as intermediaries and the same liabilities which are put on otherwise inter intermediaries, internet intermediaries, they should be put on these political parties as well. A very important point there. Thank you so much, uh, uh, all of you, for joining us. Uh, thank you, uh, Vikas and uh, Ankur, for speaking with us and giving us the position of the political parties and people who've been working for political parties on this issue.